BQ or plain? BQ. Nope. Once I came across a dead butterfly on the sidewalk next to a steamy pile of dog shit. I think that was dog shit. It became my profile picture. What is your damage, Heather? My point? Under this civilized, civilized? Facade, these thoughts get dark. Hi. And simply overdosing on positive thinking doesn't often diffuse said darkness. In fact, studies suggest it can even be destructive. <laughs> Toxic positivity is the assumption that despite a person's emotional pain, they should have... Positive vibes only. It's when someone reads all the wall art on Etsy and acts like an ass <laughs> about it. Toxic positivity can ultimately invalidate valid emotional responses because, not so deep down, many of us are wrestling, reasonably so, with the fleeting nature of existence or looming threat of entropy. What we affectionately refer to as gallows humor or black comedy can offer us some desperately needed relief from the existential crisis du jour. But, sometimes acknowledging and making light of dark things freaks people out. Case in point, the movie Heathers. When Nona Ryder's agents told her not to do it, all the big studios rejected it, except for one indie stalwart, which soon after went bankrupt. Oh, the humanity. Heathers flopped hard at the box office. But now Rotten Tomatoes has it ranked as one of the greatest films about high school ever made. <laughs> Heathers means a lot to me. In the arrested development of my 20s, I would hold parties with elaborate forts made of bedding. We would take substances, snuggle, and smile as popular people met their doom. And I think there was a time when I actually thought you were cool. It's a perfectly 1980s film, but with dangerously original language, tone, and world building, it exists outside of time in a sense. It's a movie that should never, but thankfully does, exist, and in a post-Columbine world, should perhaps not be made again. Hmm. To continue our good works in putting the... Nope. To continue our good works in putting the cult... To continue our good works in putting the cult in culture, allow me to indulge on a completely subjective look at this cult comedy and break down the enduring appeal of its dark delights. For me... As a recovering fine artist, an aspiring comedy has been. This is an education on how Heathers uses dark humor to exorcise our existential angst and critique on how the film holds up within the new context of present day life. Here are nine reasons to watch Heathers. Clink. <laughs> Welcome to Fluffy Town. No smoking, no farting, no pillow fighting. All right, celebration slash introduction. Heathers is a satirical stab at the sanitized teen flicks of the 1980s. It stars Christmas light enthusiast Winona Ryder as Veronica, a reluctant part of the trinity of Heathers. The most powerful click in school. Upon meeting Christian Slater's Jack Nicholson impression, otherwise known as JD, hijinks ensue. Veronica and her new boyfriend accidentally poison click leader Heather Chandler. Cornless! I kind of have to send my SAT scores to Stan Quentin instead of Stanford. Their attempts to make her death look like a suicide start a dangerous and hot new trend. Veronica goes from conflicted accomplice to JD's murder spree at the top of the high school food chain to an empowered boss ass bitch. Heathers is a revenge fantasy fever dream where high school popularity is a literal blood sport and Machiavellian battle royale to possess the red scrunchie of power. What is not to like? Everyone jumped off a bridge with you. Probably. Number one, Heather's influenced a lot of your favorites. Heather's takes the bad girl trope of exploitation films like The Violent Years or Switchblade Sisters and places it under a sugary pop facade. This influences a lot of media after the fact. There are inevitable comparisons made between the 1989 film Heather's, 1999's Jawbreaker, and the 2004 movie Mean Girls. On its face, you have the ruling class working to maintain their stranglehold on power, one outside character rattling the cage from within, and too many white people. You're not funny. Throw in some sardonic one-liners in a pinch of chaos, and you got yourself some cinematic touchstones that remain lightning rods for analysis to this day. Exhibit gay. Fun fact. Daniel Waters, screenwriter of Heathers, is the brother of Mark Waters, the director of Mean Girls. Heathers is the godmother matriarch high grand diva of them all, though. It didn't just clear a path for these other films, but scorching. 
Heathers went on a murder spree so these other films could call each other fugly. Why are you such a mega bitch? Because I can be. Why do we love these mean girls? The unabashed glamour and underlying rage of this type of antagonist is something audiences love to watch lash out and eventually be cut down to size. As someone who was tortured by deeply dense young boys at an early age, I like an archetypal mean girl because she demonstrates her dominance by being perceptive. You're like really pretty. Thank you. So you agree? We get to vicariously work through our own rage. So you can go shave your back now. While also anticipating the fall of a bully, which is really a win-win. Me gently with the chainsaw. Do I look like Mother Teresa? Number two, it's quotable. Listen, everyone talks about the dialogue in this film, and there is a reason. It's inventive. Did you have a brain tumor for breakfast? Punchy. Veronica, why are you pulling my dick? Convoluted. Did you hear? School's canceled today because Kurt and Ram killed themselves in a repressed homosexual suicide pact. And hilarious. I love my dead gay son. Period. I prayed for the death of Heather Chandler many times. And I felt bad every time I did it, but I kept doing it anyway. Now I know you understood everything. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Number three, nothing is sacred. Religion, death. My afterlife is so boring. It's all up for making fun. As a low-key edgelord, I revel in acknowledging the horrific thoughts that we have every day. The thing we hide due to societal conditioning. These types of transgressions offer us a greater level of surprise as a viewer, which can cause a lot of laughs. But mostly, it's liberating to mentally shirk some of what society may consider taboo for an hour and 40-something minutes. Are we going to prom or to hell? Number four, Heathers playfully critiqued teen films of the time. The goal of the Heathers team was to make the high school movie to end all high school movies. In the same way Deadpool lampoons comic book movies, Heathers satirizes 1980s teen flicks. Whether to kill yourself or not is one of the most important decisions a teenager can make. Satire can be defined as the use of humor, irony, and exaggeration to expose and critique societal issues. They need a VHS copy of all this by Monday for my Princeton application. Originally designed to be a teenage Doctor Strangelove and spec script for Stanley Kubrick, Daniel Waters exaggerates the staples of these John Hughes films, like cliche high school cliques or young suburban romance. To expose underlying issues, those types of films glossed over, both literally and figuratively. For example, absent or mean parents. Turn that back on. Protagonists that are too damn skinny. Grow up, Heather. Bulimia is so 87. Casual date rape and rampant homophobia and bullying. Doesn't this cafeteria have a no f allowed rule? Oh yeah, they seem to have an open door policy. F <laughs> oh, don't they? Is she dead? No, that's the punchline. She's alive and in stable condition. Another case of a geek trying to imitate the popular people of the school and failing miserably. Is that pate? Number five, Heather's attempts an ambitious tone. Heather's flings at you in rapid fire succession, bright, wild theatrical stunts, along with dark, weighty emotional stakes. It's like managing the light and heavy elements of a hot air balloon. Very dangerous in the wrong hands. The film is both uproarious and uncomfortable, and yet it all feels pretty deliberate and cohesive. Our hero is not completely innocent, the 1980s are not sanitary, and there are consequences to the bad behavior on display. When Martha walks out into the street, a part of me breaks. The tone was a high wire act that I think the film more or less manages, which is commendable. And even if you don't think it survived the high wire, it's a conversation starter. I must say I was impressed to see that she made proper use of the word myriad in her suicide note. Number six, you're smart if you like it. We live in a self-congratulatory world. Internet goons love to tell you that you just aren't smart enough to love the things that they love. <laughs> the Rick and Morty. If you have that thought about Heathers though, you might be right. Researchers at the Medical University of Vienna have found that a love of dark humor is linked to higher levels of intelligence. This is because it takes more cognitive processing power to understand and enjoy what many in smarty pants circles call frame shifting or frame blending. What? The darkness of Heathers is blended with a heightened, humor-drenched, surrealist landscape, which gives us, the audience, a little cerebral distance from the death and destruction. Some of this distance is accomplished by employing a cartoonish quality. The colors are really bright, JD's bomb looks like something Bugs Bunny might use. Even the characters of Betty and Veronica are named after popular characters in Archie comics. These characters don't totally live in our world. 
they're teenagers playing croquet, for instance. That's not realistic, but it does visually represent the classist game of dominance the Heathers play in the story. There is a certain tension in taboos this film traffics in, which is also an opportunity for emotional release. Like massage, applying pressure to an exact pain point can offer relief in this instance for those intellectually curious enough to notice it. Psychologists call this benign violation theory. A potential threat is introduced to our mundane reality. The comic relief occurs when the threat isn't actualized. We get to clutch our pearls and laugh out loud in the safety and security of our own homes or dark theater. Keeps me sane. With Heathers, we can comfortably perch high above the story in moral superiority, laughing at how ridiculous their lives are while recognizing the truth in our own experience. I hope I've given you all the fuel you need to quietly pat yourself on the back for enjoying smart things. Just between us big brains, we might want to keep that smuggy smirk on the inside. Because then we're just being dicks if we're not. Lick it up, baby. Lick it up. Number seven, Winona Ryder is a boss. My understanding, based on a plethora of articles and interviews, was that Winona Ryder's contribution to Heather's cannot be overstated. Funnily enough, she was not the first choice to play Veronica. In fact, supposedly she wasn't considered pretty enough for the role. No way! Apparently production was gunning hard for Jennifer Connelly, but her parents squashed that right quick after they read the script. Winona fought hard for this role, even going so far as to send sexy pictures of herself to production to prove her leading lady looks. In interviews, Ryder has said that she would have done the film for free. This is partly due to having a relevant high school experience in real life. Daniel Water said that the ultimate tone of the film changed because of Winona's performance. Veronica was originally written to be colder, more sociopathic, but Winona brought a warmth, humanity, and sense of humor to the role. Like myself, and perhaps many of you watching, Winona Ryder has a very special place in her heart for this film, which is why she's still working to conjure up a sequel. Now there is a school that self-destructed not because society didn't care, but because the school was society! Number eight, Heathers remains relevant. These privileged teenagers in Heathers are political animals, abandoned by authority figures, corrupted by power, and grappling with the nihilism of oncoming adulthood. Heathers drips with cynicism which is partly why it's considered a film that defined Generation X. But that same Gen X cynicism is prevalent in modern times. The movie was relevant when it came out, and perhaps is even more relevant, maybe too relevant now. Winona Ryder and Christian Slater have been called a Gen X dream team. Those born roughly between 1961 and 1981 are considered Gen X. I, as a baby Gen Xer, can even claim the subcategory of Xennial, if I was so self-inclined and so self-involved. But if the Doc Martens fit, you know what I'm saying? Unscientifically speaking, Gen Xers are considered more cynical than sentimental. Some relate this to the Nixon era being a stain on our collective unconscious. Recent world events have only compounded the problem for all generations though. We just have trust issues. It's time to address the Columbine in the room. 10 years after the film came out, it became eerily associated with the horrors of the Columbine shooting and violence in US schools. The New York Times even contacted the director of Heather's, Michael Lehman, for comment directly after the event. Heather's executive director, Denise Novi, has stated that it was utterly outlandish at the time to think that a dark trench coat wearing mofo with anger issues would harm his school. That said, it's totally valid, of course, if the gun JD brings into school could absolutely not be a benign experience for those who have dealt with that kind of trauma. Something I hold on to here is that this movie does have a heroine that fights against nihilism and the cynicism and disillusionment of adulthood. In that way, she is a leader we could use right now. Segway. Heather, my love, there's a new sheriff in town. Number nine, Veronica becomes the leader we want. From complacency and trauma to strength through compassion, Veronica eventually becomes a leader we can root for. She takes ownership of her power, finds independence, and topples both an authoritarian regime and a terrorist. As someone who wants to identify as a Veronica type, I'd like to think she makes a good leader. To test this theory, we're going to saddle up to five leadership qualities deemed most worthwhile by Northeastern's Masters of Science and Leadership program. Would Veronica, by this criteria, make a good leader? Would you? Let me know in the comments. Number one, they're self-aware and prioritize personal development. You know what I want, babe? 
Watch! Cool guys like you out of my life. Number two, they focus on developing others. If you were happy every day of your life, you wouldn't be a human being, you'd be a game show host. Number three, they encourage strategic thinking, innovation, and action. Excuse me, I think I know Heather a little bit better than you do. If she was gonna slit her wrist, the knife would be spotless. Number four, they're ethical and civic-minded. I just want my high school to be a nice place. Amen. Did that sound bitchy? Number five, they practice effective cross-cultural communication. It's just Heather, why can't we talk to different kinds of people? I think she matches up pretty well. Let me know in the comments if you think she'd make a good fit, and maybe how you did. In closing, Heather's was an influential, quotable death knell for the 1980s teen film. The movie shows us that bad things can happen at any age, and that everything, whether work, family, or politics, is a high school hellscape. But in like a ha-ha way. <laughs> Joseph Campbell says to participate joyfully in the sorrows of the world, because you can't cure the world of sorrows, but you can choose to live in joy. I'd like that. When we laugh, even at darker things, we're all essentially agreeing on something. In such a deeply tribalist society, humor can still be an opportunity to burrow under the walls we've built around each other. Even a clumsy joke can lead to a great conversation, which has value. Regardless, Heathers has achieved cult status, which means something powerful endures. Let me know what you'd like me to cover next because this gay's agenda is a funny one. Thank you. My God, suicide, why? Does this answer your question? Let's take a look at some of the homosexual artifacts I dug up playing at the scene. Candy dish. <laughs> and here's the one perfecto thing I picked up. Mineral water. To your gay health. How very. Interestingly enough, also linked to lower levels of aggression. <gasps> I'm wearing sweatpants. And these suspenders aren't working. I wonder if this needs to be tighter. Tight. Tight. Can offer us some desperately needed honking. Comparisons made between... Excuse you? Do I mean that? <laughs> I mean, I do. So can I say it like I mean it? This is an education on how Heathers does stuff to our brains. Somebody needs to do stuff to my brain. To exorcise our existent You got a frame here and a frame here and they do some of this. You have a frame here and then it shifts to here. Wow. I don't know.